I am Rat Puppet, and I am invincible at math. Hey, what's up, YouTube? In this problem, we're going to prove that this limit is equal to 1 using the precise definition of convergence uh, for sequences. So recall that we, when we take the limit uh, as n approaches infinity of a sub n, and we say that's equal to L, or L is a real number, what does this mean? Well, this means that for every epsilon greater than 0, this means for all, right, for all epsilon greater than 0, we can find some natural number. So there exists a natural number n. I'll, I'll say it's a positive integer. Just a, I like to use the positive integers instead of the natural numbers because some people allow 0 to be a natural number. I just, I'll stick with positive integers. <laughs> For every epsilon greater than 0, there is a positive integer n such that for all little n bigger than capital N, uh, the distance between a sub n and l can be made small. In other words, the absolute value of a sub n and l is less than epsilon. If you think about it, this is true for all epsilon, no matter how small. So you can make it as small as you like. like you can pick your epsilon to be 0 0.00000001, and then when you subtract them, you, you know, you get a, they're really close, right? If, if they're that distance, if epsilon is that, they are super close, right? They are super, super close. So how close can you get as close as you like? So proof. Oh, actually, before we prove this, we have to figure out the proof. So in our proof, we'll start with our epsilon, right? And we'll have to find n. We'll have to find n. So let's do our scratch work and see if we can find n. So scratch. So we'll start our proof by having our epsilon. So we have that. We get that for free. And then so we need, we need to find big N, right? We need big N. We need to find it somehow. Such that this condition is true. So let's go ahead and write down this condition. A sub n in this problem is this here. And this is L. Right? This is L. So it'll be n over n plus 1, so n over n plus 1 minus 1. And then 1, you can think of that as n plus 1 over n plus 1. So this is equal to n over n plus 1 minus n plus 1 over n plus 1. We can do that. That way we can subtract these, right? And the goal is to make this less than epsilon. That, that's our goal, right? We want to make this less than epsilon. Now we can formally subtract. This is n, be careful here, parentheses n plus 1 over n plus 1. Right? We can subtract them because the denominators are the same. So when the denominators, denominators are the same, we can actually perform a subtraction. This is equal to, these cancel, and so we get negative 1 over n plus 1. And then we can drop the absolute value, and it will eat the negative sign. Right? The absolute value of negative 1 is 1, so we get 1 over n plus 1. And again, we want this to be less than epsilon. Well, this is, this, is, this is less than or equal to 1 over n, right? Because n plus 1 is bigger than n, so this fraction is smaller than this fraction, right? And then we want this to be less than epsilon. That's what we want. So now we can solve this for n. So to do that, we can multiply both sides by n. So if you do that, you would get 1 less than n epsilon, right? You would just put a little n here, put a little baby n here, boom. Then you would divide by epsilon then. So you would get 1 over epsilon less than n, right? Just dividing both sides by epsilon there, right? So 1 over epsilon and then less than n. 1 over epsilon less than n. You can read this backwards, right? n greater than 1 over epsilon. n greater than 1 over epsilon. And we can choose. We can find an n that's bigger than that. We're allowed to do that. There's this property in mathematics. It's called the Archimedean principle. It says given any real number, you can find a positive integer which is bigger, right? So... 1 over epsilon is a real number because epsilon is positive, so it's not 0. It makes sense. So 1 over epsilon is a real number. So by the power of Archimedes, <laughs> we can find a positive integer that is bigger. So that's going to be our n. We'll choose that to be our n in the proof. Let's go ahead and write the formal proof. So I'm going to erase this. And we said n was bigger than 1 over epsilon. We'll need that in the proof. So proof. So we'll start our proof by letting epsilon be greater than 0. That's the first condition in the definition. Epsilon be greater than zero. And we're going to choose a natural number n. So choose n bigger than 1 over epsilon. We can do that via the Archimedean principle, right? So choose a positive integer n greater than 1 over epsilon. Then for all little n greater than capital N, right? For all little n greater than capital N, we're going to look at this difference, a sub n minus l. Right? We're going to be a little bit more formal this time. So we have n over n plus 1 is 1. 
And we have to show that this is less than epsilon. We can't just do this. Right? <laughs> this is super bad. Right, so we have to show it's less than epsilon. This is equal to absolute value n over m plus 1 minus n plus 1 over m plus 1. That was the trick we did before uh, in order to subtract to subtract these quantities, right? So this is equal to absolute value n minus n plus 1 over n plus 1. And then you can subtract these as before. So this is equal to negative 1 over n plus 1. And this is 1 over n plus 1, just like before. And this is less than or equal to 1 over n. Now, we said that n is bigger than 1 over epsilon, right? So I'm going to come over here and just make a, a comment. Let's just, let's just come over here and continue working here. So since little n is bigger than capital N, right, which is bigger than 1 over epsilon, let's solve for 1 over n. Let's be really formal. You can multiply by epsilon, so you get epsilon n greater than 1, right, dividing by n, you get epsilon bigger than 1 over n. So 1 over n, read it backwards, 1 over n is less than epsilon. So thus, let's, let's, let's rewrite what we've done. Let's start back here. n over n plus 1 minus 1 is less than or equal to 1 over n. Right? So this is less than or equal to 1 over n. And what did we do here? We showed that 1 over n is less than epsilon. So that's less than epsilon. So it's just a nice formality to really show how the proof falls apart. Because when you get here, you still kind of have to explain you know, why is this less than epsilon? We know because we worked it out backwards in the scratch work, but it's nice to justify it in the proof. And to do that, what you do is you go back here and you say, okay, little n is, well, you need to figure out what's going on with little n, right? Because all you have here is little n. You say, okay, where's little n? Little n's right here. Here's little n. Little n is bigger than big n, right? So little n is bigger than big n, which is bigger than 1 over epsilon. So little n, let me do it again. So little n, so little n is bigger than 1 over epsilon. And then what you do is, is you solve for what you have here. So you have 1 over n. So you solve for 1 over n. So you multiply by epsilon. Boom. So you get epsilon times n bigger than 1. So you solve for, for 1 over n. So you divide by little n. Divide by little n. You get epsilon bigger than 1 over n. So 1 over n. We get backwards. 1 over n is less than epsilon. So since you kind of derail, what you do then is you go back and, and you, you write down what you're doing. You let the reader know, hey, wait a minute, we sidetracked, so look, what, what are we doing? We're doing this. We're showing that this difference, follow the string, is less than or equal to 1 over n. Oh, and we just showed it's less than epsilon, so we can write it again just for clarity. So that's it. Take care.